Welcome back to another monthly wrap up. I got up to so much this month. It was a wild month for both TV and film. I think that this has been my favorite month this year. Um, sorry if you can hear something. I don't know why, I just keep hearing things around my house. But this month has been my favorite so far for all of the content I've seen in cinema and at home and including TV shows, so stay tuned for that. But before we get started, I do wanna thank today's sponsor, which is Sorry about that. Today's video is sponsored by Paramount Home Media, who are celebrating the release of Scream 6. And Scream 6 is where I start my video because Scream 6 was the first film I watched in April at the cinemas. I was so excited to finally watch this one. As you guys know, I had been in Japan for the whole month and I missed the premiere. So it was just a very exciting treat to come home to. I did a whole review on Scream, giving my thoughts, but one of my favorite parts of course Gail. <laughs> More so I was really excited by the opening scene and having Samara Weaving speak in an Australian accent. That was a really cool moment for me and I just loved how everything came together. It's one of the best murder mysteries in horror and it's just so thrilling to be able to find out who Ghostface is and it not be spoiled so I was so stoked about that. I also really appreciated all of the lore and the tie-ins to the original films. Having all of the props, if you've seen the film you know what I'm talking about. It was just really exciting to see that in one place and I'm just as excited to see it a second time. I love knowing who the killer is and then going back and seeing all of the clues that I may have missed. So it's really exciting now that Scream 6 is expressed from the cinema right to your home. You can buy it or rent it on digital. Oh my god, I've just had a peek at myself in the monitor. Okay, I didn't realize. Oh my god, my hands. <laughs> Okay, I'm back and I've cleaned myself up a little bit. Let's get into the rest of this month because I have a lot to get through. So of course, as I said, we started with Scream uh, 6. From here, I saw The Pope's Exorcist, which I did a review on if you do want to check that out. I wasn't a big fan of this film, but I actually saw a lot of love for it in the comments. So um, I don't know, maybe check out the trailer and see whether you think it's something you want to watch. It's basically Russell Crowe playing this fictitious version <laughs> based on a true story of the Pope's exorcist. <laughs> he exercises people. I don't know. It's like he's trying to be like a cool Pope and it's a very interesting message. Um, then I watch Mafia Mama. This is so funny because who would think, it's Tony Collette by the way, but who would think that this film is gory. It's so gory. Um, this is just a fun, silly, so silly comedy about a mum who's just had enough. Some things transpire in her life and she goes to Italy um, to kind of get away from it all. And she discovers that she has inherited this mafia business, basically. And it's just a silly, goofy movie. I would say this is for some of my golden gals. <laughs> uh, it's definitely for a particular demographic. But I could, I could see the charm in it. I thought it was really fun and over the top. If you do like goofy movies... This one's a lot of fun. It doesn't take itself seriously. And Tony Collette is a delight. Um, but it's really gory, which was so unexpected. But it's just a funny movie. If you have some friends that you like watching silly films with, definitely check this one out. Because I think a lot of people didn't like this film and couldn't see the humor in it. But if you go in with an open mind, knowing it's meant to be goofy, you're probably going to enjoy it a lot more. After this one, I watched the Super Mario movie. I know people were divided on this and I heard a lot, there's a lot of backlash for like critics not liking this and I am a certified Rotten Tomatoes critic, believe it or not, um, which is amazing. Uh, and I don't know, like I want to know how you guys, like what did you think about it? I play Mario Kart all the time. I'm a big Boo fan, surprise, surprise. It was okay, but it wasn't anything great. And I thought that they just had so much room to make it amazing and so fun. It looked beautiful, but I know a lot of people who are also into Mario and, and love that universe <laughs> um, and kind of felt the same. The thing is, a lot of people said, what do you do expect as a kid's movie? Exactly. And I totally agree with that point. That's probably why I gave it two and a half because it is a kid's movie, so I wouldn't enjoy it. But 
I don't know, part of me thought that they catered to the wrong demographic because a lot of Mario fans are like older now. And when I actually went to the cinema to watch this, which was a nightmare, by the way, <laughs> because there was kids like rolling down the aisle. A lot of the people who were sitting still and really wanting to watch it watched all the way through to this uh, scene after the credits were all adults and all of the kids had left. So I think that it was a split demographic, which probably was probably hard for them. But yeah, I didn't love it. Um, it was kind of in the middle. And then I watched the Super Mario Bros. If you, oh my, I don't even know how to explain this, but basically it's like a live action version. Um, and it has a pretty crazy cast, including Dennis Hopper. It is such a wild film. Uh, and I loved how wacky it was at the start. I think this has a lot of nostalgia for people who watched it um, back when it first came out in 1993, so early 90s. They tried too hard to make this story succinct when I think that they just should have leaned into the surrealism completely. But I mean, I can't make any really critiques on a movie called Super Mario Bros, which is a live action of a, a video game about Italian plumbers. <laughs> I don't know. I just don't feel like there's any point in critiquing anything there, but I've watched it. I know the law now. I watched Inside, I did a Patreon review for this. If you're not part of my Patreon, it's just $2 every single month and I do bonus videos every week, spoiler stuff. Um, yeah, if you wanna support the channel, it really does help me out. I watched Inside, which is the Willem Dafoe thriller. It's about him, he's, I think he's an art thief and he breaks into this apartment where he gets locked inside and then you're basically just following him for the entire film as he goes mad, um, which is not very hard. We've seen Willem Dafoe in this role before. Can you name the film? Uh, he is stunning. Like there's no one else I would watch doing this. Um, but in saying that there wasn't much to it. I felt like it could have been a short film or even more so like a video clip. Um, it felt very Qu Christopher Walken when he does the, um, is it the Fat Boy Slim song? Uh, where he like goes flying. <laughs> it felt very much like a cool idea, but then it was just kind of dragged along for a long time. So you're meant to kind of sh see how he works with what he has around him. And the interesting thing is he's broken into this penthouse, which is luxury, but it's all about like what he can actually use in this house and kind of the metaphor of what they actually have. They have a lot of expensive stuff, but what does it actually mean to survive with that? Um, so I get what they were doing, but I didn't absolutely love it. I watched all of the Evil Deads. Um, I did a ranking on the Evil Dead, um, or Evil Dead, <laughs> however you want to say it. After doing the Children of the Corn ranking like two months ago, this was a joy. My compliments to the chef, absolutely loved it. All of the films are so good. Um, so I was really happy with that. If you haven't checked out my ranking, please do. I do like a deep dive. It was just so fun and such a fun video. It's like action packed from the start to the end. Lots of information. And I love doing these videos. I got a comment asking why I do these before I see the new film that comes out. I do it to hype us both up because it's very exciting to revisit revisit lore, get it fresh in my mind before I see the new film. Um, yeah, and get it fresh in all of our minds. It's just like a fun hype thing. I feel like I'm a horror hype girl, which is so lame to say, but that's what I feel like <laughs> my job is here. So uh, I, I love doing those videos. Um, I watched Dash Cam again. I can't help it. I can't help it. I like this movie. Uh, I did a review when it first came out um, last year, I think it was. And oh my gosh, this movie has torn audiences apart. If you don't know about it, it's this Blum, this strange Blumhouse film. It is directed by Rob Savage, who did Host, and no one was expecting him to do this film, which is why it's so funny. It's basically following the same formula as Host, where we follow this one, a live stream in Host. It was in a Skype chat, but we follow this character, Annie, and she is the worst of the worst. <laughs> uh, Rob Savage described her as someone that you'd want to cross the street to avoid. And uh, it just is the most insane, twisty, turny ride that is out of this world. Uh, but the reason I rewatched it is because Nightmare Maven and I did a stream on both this and the scary of 60 first. And if you want to check out that stream, I talk about it in depth. I went through the whole story because I know that there's a lot of controversy behind how the film was made. And so I just, it was really interesting to find that out and how much of her character is really in it. And by the way, this is a direct quote. I found it. She actually says that it's 94% of her personality. So take that for what it is. Um, I, yeah. Then I watched The Scary of 61st. If you don't know about this, another very strange movie. I think I rated this like a six. 
in um, when I first saw it, but I definitely took it down a little bit in um, the second time. <laughs> this one is uh, two roommates. They move into this apartment and one of them meets this conspiracy theorist um, who tells... <laughs> so bad, tells uh, her that she lives in the apartment, one of the apartments that Jeffrey Epstein owned. And then they go down this rabbit hole and it's meant to be this like whole satire kind of look on this element, but it's a very interesting, um, I guess, element being theories, like conspiracy theories, but it's a very interesting case to, to choose for that because it's obviously there's a lot of victims um, and yeah, it's very focused on the victims, which I find really interesting. I probably would not recommend it to you guys if you haven't seen it and you have no idea what I'm talking about. Keep going on with your life. I watched The Awakening. This one has Rebecca Hall. So I know a lot of people are getting back on the Rebecca Hall train um, recently because um, she's had some great horror movies come out. This is a very classic Victorian-esque ghost story. So if you're into classic ghost stories, uh, it's very sad and romantic. It's got it. It's got it all. It's but it is quite cliche at the same time. I didn't absolutely love this film, but I think it works and it's a fun one to watch with some friends or. I mean, it's, it's cozy weather here in Australia, but um, it is a good cozy weather film. So if you've got a rug and you've got a, a hot tea or a wine and you put on the fire, this is the film to watch for sure. I watched Evil Dead Rise. I did a review on it. I love this film. I, <laughs> I thought it was so fun from start to end and I'm so glad everyone else is loving it too. Um, I watched The Longest Third Day. This was just something randomly on Netflix and I don't think it went for very long, so I just chucked it on the background. It's basically made up of all of this footage from two people who met during lockdown, the first lockdown. Or oh, I guess it's some people just have a first lockdown. <laughs> These two people went on a date and got stuck in a different country and their their date went on for like six months, I think it was. Something crazy like that. And they were stuck there together and they have all this footage because this man on this date uh, very much liked to record his life and wanted to be a vlogger. Um, so it's an interesting kind of look at that. But honestly, I feel like they were really reaching for a story here because a lot is put in their mouths and you can tell by the producers. I don't know if anyone's watched it. Let me know if you thought the same. And I feel like they tried to make the stakes really heavy when they really weren't. Uh, I probably wouldn't recommend that to you guys, to be honest. From there, I watched Bo is Afraid. Um, and I am, I know that this video is coming out at the end of the month, but I am going to be watching this again tomorrow. I love this film. If you haven't seen my review, I do have a review up, a spoiler free review with my whole reaction. Loved it. Um, and I loved it, but I was so apprehensive because I, it, it is a shock coming out of the cinema. And then the first thing I do is turn on a camera and talk to it. And I'm like, I'm still in shock. And I think a lot of people felt that after watching it. I know a lot of people don't like this film. And I said that in my initial review. The more I've thought about it, the more I really like it. So I'm excited to see it a second time and see how it works. It's a big commitment though to spend six hours <laughs> in a cinema to see this film twice. Uh, let me know how many of you guys liked this one because I've actually seen a lot more positive comments than I thought. I assumed a lot of people would hate it, which I have seen a couple of people say they wasted their time and they didn't like it. But I've seen a lot of positive ones, which I was really surprised by. This is very different to any of his other films, I thought. I watched The Afflicted and I'm really unhappy about this film. Why do I get so much joy out of you giving this one star instead of half a star with that review? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I don't know why you do. Um, The Afflicted, I did recently a video that was movies based on horrifying true stories and this is one of those things. <laughs> it is. It gets in that category. But this film is so poorly made and it is just watching the victim like in turmoil and gives no release or no real perspective and I could not. Basically it's about a mum and it starts from, the, it doesn't even really explain what happens but it starts with her just off the, the deep end and um, she abuses her kids. That's the whole story and it's just it's just all of that kind of like lifetimey, quite acting, but very brutal and you see it all. And it just, 
I just don't know why it was made into a movie this way. I would not recommend. I really didn't like that one. I watched Class Action Park, which a couple of people on my Discord recommended to me. Uh, this one, very, well, it is interesting. It's a documentary based on a park, water park kind of, in America and all of the crazy things that happened um, in the 80s with it and like all of the kids who ran it and all of the accidents and some unfortunate deaths and just everything they got away with. Um, if you're a theme park junkie, which I love theme parks, uh, <laughs> it's a very interesting watch. I thought it was good, gave you factual information, but it wasn't like they kind of um, gave it a story and gave you a high and a low and any suspense. Um, I'm used to watching overproduced <laughs> Netflix documentaries, obviously, uh, but I still thought it was it was really interesting. So if you're into theme parks, I would, I mean, I guess I'd recommend it if you don't mind freaking yourself out. After that, I watched We Have a Ghost. I talked about this in my What's Coming to VOD video like two months ago. I don't know why I waited so long. It's actually so good. The cast is phenomenal. And if you do have kids, this is a great like PG horror. I would say there's a few gory, gory bits, but honestly, it's it's such a feel good uh, movie. I really love it. Uh, it's got everyone in it too. It's got David Harper, Anthony Mackie, Jennifer Coolidge. It was, it was just, it was so fun. And it is uh, directed by Christopher Landon. Uh, it's basically the story of a family that move into a house and they find a ghost in their attic and they have a son who's having a hard time fitting in with his family and he's able to connect with this ghost and they try and figure out who the ghost is. It's a mystery but it's kooky and it's fun and then it has this whole element of uh, his dad wants to put this ghost on social media and they get a following and it's just got a lot of fun moving parts and it was very heartfelt and I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, it is, again, it's kind of like a kid movie in a way. It's like a family movie, I would say. Um, but there's fun for everybody for sure. And then I watched A Good Person and I cried my eyes out. Um, this one just came out in the cinemas in Australia and I was lucky enough to go to a screening which had a live Q&A uh, with Zach Braff, uh, obviously by via Skype, uh, and he was great. I'm not a Zach Braff fan. I've never been a fan. I'm not really a fan of Scrubs. I don't even like Garden State, I know. Uh, but this film was phenomenal. And I went because of Florence Pugh, obviously. But this film was so... I can't even... I cried the whole way through. Every single scene, I'd like, okay, the tears there. Yep, cool, next scene. Uh, it was... It's such a brave and... Oh, I just loved it. Basically, it's the story of this character who... Uh, I don't want to explain too much to give anything away, but she has this event happen to her which completely turns her life on its head and it's shown from such an interesting perspective um, and then it deals with her trying to get over the trauma of this event and substance abuse. Uh, it has very romantic, not romantic, it has very poetic ties um, back into it and it's just an interesting way of expressing grief and um, yeah, talking about addiction and why people are in pain. So it's very raw, super raw, super real. And uh, Florence Pugh, I, I don't know if this is like an Oscar film, you know, what people say, but she needs an Oscar for this. It's, just, it's so good. Her performance is so good. Um, and I really do recommend checking this one out. Uh, it's a drama, obviously. There's like some kooky kind of comedy parts, but it's a it's a drama. Then I watched Sweet River. This was on Netflix. This is an Australian horror movie about a woman who goes to this rural town to find out what happened um, to her son. And it is like a little ghosty story in a rural town. Everyone's got secrets to hide, all that good stuff. I felt it was pretty like basic. <laughs> it's exactly what I said it was. Um, and I think a lot of people... I can see here, I have rated it two and a half, so probably feel the same. I probably wouldn't, wouldn't recommend it to you guys. Um, I watched The Strays as well. This is on Netflix. Uh, this, I Honestly, I have a hard time explaining what this film is about because I still don't get it. <sighs> you basically watch this woman run away from her old life, then she's followed by her past, basically. But it's done in such an absurd way and the message that they're trying to say is a very strong handed message and I just don't think it's treated with as much care as it should be as well. It's really got to do with her heritage and her running from who she really is and it has this really weird message as well with 
men leaving families and how it is when a woman leaves her kids and like abandons them and I, I'm like okay I get what you're saying it's kind of interesting but why why are you saying it this way so I would not recommend it's a very messy movie and it was very confusing what was happening half the time um I wouldn't recommend it I really wouldn't although I can see my friend Vicky loved it Vicky I need to figure out what that means um I'm gonna call you, girl. Um, <laughs> I watched Orgasm Inc., The Story of One Taste. This is a Netflix documentary about... <sighs> what do I say? How do I put this on YouTube? Um, about a woman who has this idea <laughs> around sexuality and owning it as a woman. And um, she creates this kind of business which turns into this big company and then it kind of flips and shows the dark side of that and what she was really doing. Surprise, it's capitalism, <laughs> you know. Uh, it was fine. It wasn't anything, yeah, too interesting. I felt like they didn't dive as deep as I wanted them to go. They kind of show you everything and then they, and you know it's going to be sinister. And then when they, it turns on its head, I wanted more details and there just wasn't enough information. I watched Dead Ringers. I I think I watched this before, like a, like 20 years ago, and honestly I could not remember, so I really wanted to rewatch it. And I was doing that video about, you know, what movies are based on true stories, and I know a lot of people talked about this, but I honestly, I was trying to focus on that video, real events that were more messed up than the movie, and I felt like this movie is way more messed up than um, the true event that happened. Dead Ring is, it's also now as a TV show, so I really wanted to follow that up by watching that eventually. So it follows these two identical twins and their strange relationship. They're also both doctors, gynecologists. It's their relationship and of course it's David Cronenberg, so there's a lot of like weird sexual tension mixed with body horror. Um, and yeah, it's a story about them trying to navigate the world and become, you know, separate identities. And then there's also addiction one in there as well. So there's a lot going on in this film. And to be honest, I did not love it. I do love um, David Cronenberg so much. And this just wasn't my vibe. Speaking of Cronenberg, I watched a couple of uh, the younger Cronenberg. Brandon Cronenberg, I watched, uh, rewatched, I should say, Possessor, Antiviral, which I haven't seen Antiviral in years. We'll get into it. And then Infinity Pool, which are his three films, his three features. Um, Possessor, rewatch, absolutely love. <laughs> that was my chef's kiss, by the way. Absolutely love this film. And I honestly don't think I give it enough credit. Uh, it is such a fantastic film strange meeting of all of these different things at the same it's just beautiful if you have not seen possessor it will and you like mind bending films it has it all uh we follow this woman who i don't want to give away too much but basically she has this very interesting job that allows her to impersonate other people um and it's about her losing it's about self-identity really um her losing herself within that um and it's fantastic anti was his first feature in 2012 i think that this film has such an interesting concept i just don't think that I think that they get lost a little bit along the way. It's quite, it feels really long as well. It is a film where, <laughs> how do I even put this? In the future or in this alternate reality, they are able to take viruses that sick celebrities have and sell them to the general public. It's all about the idea of celebrities. And I have written down like this quote that I love from it when I was watching it. I was like, I need to write that down because it's brilliant. Celebrities are not people, they're group hallucinations. I love that quote. I think it's fantastic. Um, and yeah, we follow Caleb Laundry Jones as he um, is the protagonist and antagonist in this film. Um, and he's down spiral be between creating these viruses and how it's used kind of against him. So it's, again, poetic justice. We love that. I love that. Uh, and yeah, it's absolutely, it's a, it's a very strange journey. Very cool first film. And then I watched Infinity Pool. Again, a rewatch. This one divided audiences. I saw a lot of comments where people hated this, but you know, Mia Goth, again at her best with her accent, her actual accent, which I love. Um, and this is a bizarre story about this writer who goes to this, it's a fictitious um, country and he goes to this fictitious kind of island and there um, he gets himself into trouble and he realizes that his, I guess, punishment isn't what we expected. In fact, it's 
it's out of this world. <laughs> um, there's a punishment that will change how he sees himself forever. If you haven't seen it, don't want to spoil it because it's fantastic. The little twist in it, or not really twist, just the idea behind it. But yeah, I, I watched all those movies because I, if you've watched this far, I'm going to tell you, I was very lucky to be able to interview Brendan Cronenberg. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I just did today actually. And I have some fascinating <laughs> findings to talk to you guys about. Um, we talked about gatekeeping and horror and horror being a dirty word. So um, I'm very excited to share that with you next month. But let's talk about TV because I'm dying to talk about it. So I finally watched the newest season of You. Not a fan. For me, You is very much a guilty pleasure. It is like bubblegum. It's silly. It's 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 nonsensical plot hole galore it makes no sense but it's fun seeing him wriggle his way in and out of stuff and there's just something about him okay like there is just something about him and it's so problematic but it is so juicy <laughs> um yeah and i have done a video comparing uh the the audiobook to uh the first season i think it was but Oh my god, if you ever heard the audiobook, it's so interesting because you hear the narration like through your obviously through your ears, but you're hearing him talk to you personally and it's like the whole way through. It's really creepy. Anyway, I had high hopes for the new season. I know a lot of people didn't like the last season, um, but I've liked it all the way through. I've known exactly what it is, you know, and in the newest season, it switches something up a very interesting aspect it switches it up and it becomes kind of like a murder mystery where he's in the middle and he's trying to figure something else out but, 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 but. all of that comes crashing down real fast uh and i don't want to spoil it but I, it was just very disappointing the direction they chose to uh take it and i couldn't stand the characters by the end and i don't care what happens to them. <laughs> there is gonna be one more season and i i will watch it okay i'll watch it but I was very disappointed by you, which is so sad to say, because I really, it's just, it was just such a fun, silly show and it just got really, really silly and not in the best way. But I can follow that up by saying I watched one of my favorite TV shows I've ever seen in my whole life this month and uh, it was totally worth it. I watched Beef. If you have not watched Beef, watch Beef now. I was like, mm, umming and ahhing about it. It is honestly one of the best rides. Uh, it is a Netflix show. It's actually produced by A24. It stars Steven Yeun and Ali Wong. And it is this very interesting, twisty ride about these two people who get into a road rage incident. And then from there, their lives intertwine in ways you won't even believe. And they're just so petty. And it's, it's a really, I, I can't even explain where this journey takes you by the end of this TV show. You won't even know what planet you're on. It was an amazing ride and I actually cried at the end. They really gave it their all and best performances, but just such good script writing um, and storytelling. And I can't, I don't want to say too much about it because I don't want to give anything away. I can't recommend you watch it enough. Watch it thank me later. I don't think there's anyone who won't like this TV show. It's fantastic. Anyway, that's everything I watched this month. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I need to go wipe this blood off because I can still see it. And remember, Scream 6 is now out. You can rent it or buy it on digital. I'll leave a link as well down below. Thank you guys so much for being here and hanging out with me today. And I'll talk to you all very soon. Stay safe and stay spooky. Bye friends. Ooh.